They, they would. Uh, the approach to medicine now is more of the, the holistic uh, team, team approach. Um, the concern, obviously, is that um, any of the uh, alternative treatments uh, should not you know, be in conflict or, or undermine uh, any scientific medical treatment. So, in other words, if you're taking a medication and you decide to um, uh, do one of the alternative treatments, there needs to be assurance that uh, the alternative treatment isn't going to mitigate the effect of the medication. Yeah, and I think um, the I, I I think the 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 problem, unfortunately, for uh, Mr. Baker is that there was not um, he was not willing to and and trained in the scientific approach, you know, to get some of his uh, alleged cures uh, through the process to, so people could see and have confidence in them. So, um, you know, it would be interesting today to do the study, you know. Uh, I think it would be very fascinating to see if, uh, some, take, take some of Norman Baker's uh, uh, treatments and actually run them through the scientific study and uh, uh, see how they fare. Well, I think the I think the AMA has um, um, you know they're 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 kind of in in two um, I guess two two different uh, perspectives uh, that they have to deal with. One is uh, the physician side and the scientific side in the training and you know do no harm to patients and so forth and so on. So they have to uphold that and maintain that. And the other side of it is a little on the political side um, that they have to support their members. Uh, they have to, they have to uh, make sure that uh, the opinions of their members are brought forth um, you know, as, as the society speaks and puts an opinion out. And so, so there's this political side and the scientific side of the AMA. And so I think the um, um, situation that they probably found themselves in back in 1930 was there were so many patients that were um, coming to the Baker Institute and maybe not not faring well not you know he didn't cure everybody that came came to him uh, and and so they because it was not traditional medicine, because there was not transparency about, you know, Norman didn't uh, post uh, the ingredients to all of his treatments and what he was doing um, uh, and, and, and make it available in, in public, I think there was skepticism, you know, on part of the medical community, and I think that's reflected in the AMA's, um, you know, approach and interaction with him. With technology the way it is, uh, because we live in a in a, um, a society that's based on free enterprise and is market driven, uh, dollars are involved. And when you get dollars involved with people and with healthcare, it gets kind of jumbled up. So uh, you need to know that risk is there. You need to know the information. Uh, but um, that that's one of the um, the downsides of um, uh, you know Norman Baker, he couldn't sit down with the patient and say, "Okay, here's what I expect is going to happen." Um, with the AMA treatment, uh, they pretty well knew what was going to happen. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm going to burn your skin. I'm going to do surgery. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so so there was a limited amount of information for the consumer. But I think today. Um, more and more, there's more information available. The, the key there, and I think you'll find this uh, with physicians today uh, who are dealing with similar patients who maybe are at their last hope uh, and so forth, the, the key is um, the alternative treatment is okay if you want to try it because it probably has a positive psychological boost to you. Um, you know, you, it gives you hope. It uh, you know you have one you have one more thing to try before you give up totally. Um, but 
you don't want it to harm you. You don't want it to shorten your life. You don't want it to have a negative effect on any other treatment you're getting. And so, so I think the, um, um, you know, back in the day, uh, where med medicine uh, in in 1930 was a little more trial and error uh, than it is now. Um, now it's a little more based on, or a lot more based on studies and and uh, and so forth. I think back then, um, it it probably did give people um, you know some some hope. Uh, and so I, I think Norman and others have pushed more. Uh, government regulation. I think, uh, obviously, with the FDA's involvement and in, in all the medications we take, um, and I think it's pushed the research uh, scientific community uh, to um, do more study. Cancer today is curable. There are, um, you know, look how far we've come with breast cancer, with uh, a lot of uh, colon cancer, and so forth and so on. Uh, if if we can detect it. Uh, soon enough, we can cure it. And there are many people, thousands of people in the country who are cancer free uh, because they got early detection, they got a checkup, they uh, went through the treatment and they're remaining cancer free. So, so I think that some cancers are curable, but it's not going to be um, hey I've invented this one pill and no matter what kind of cancer you have, take it and you're going to be cured. I, I don't think that we're going to see that.